Hello, my name's Chloe and I'm one of the occupational therapists that support the pulmonary rehab service. Today I'm going to be giving you an educational talk on energy conservation. So the aim of today's session is to be able to increase your understanding of fatigue, learn more about what energy conservation is and how this can support you, learn more effective ways to manage your activities of daily living, to have greater understanding of what anxiety is. So first of all, what is fatigue? It's an overwhelming sense of exhaustion that can't be relieved by sleep or rest. It can leave you feeling like you have no energy at all and simple tasks can be very difficult to complete. Unlike everyday tiredness, it can be triggered by the smallest amount of activity. Your fatigue can be exacerbated by stress, lack of sleep or feeling low in mood. Symptoms may fluctuate in intensity and severity and they can also vary from person to person. As someone with a respiratory illness, you'll probably agree that breathing can be difficult, distressing, frightening and tiring, all of which can have an impact on your ability to carry out simple everyday tasks. Examples of activities that you might find difficult are going for a walk, completing the house chores, meeting up with friends and socialising, so first of all, what is energy conservation? Energy conservation is about trying to find more efficient ways to manage your activities of daily living. It's all about finding ways to save energy, to be able to do the things that you need to do that day, but also activities that you would like to do as well. Everything you do on a daily basis, from getting up and having a shower, going and doing the shopping, and climbing into bed at night, is classed as an activity and therefore uses some type of energy. Therefore, we need to start thinking about what types of energy we are going to be using. This could be physical. So going for a walk, climbing up the stairs, going shopping. It could be mental, completing a crossword, making a to-do list, or deciding what you're going to have for tea. Or emotional, worrying about a forthcoming event, feeling stressed or low in mood. A good way to think about how you're using up your energy is relating it to how a car needs fuel. So for a car, you need to fill it up with fuel to run. Similar to how we need to store up our energy, and we can do this by having a good sleep hygiene, a good diet intake, and regular rest. If you raced around in your car at high speed and low gears all day, you wouldn't get a lot out of your tank of fuel. Whereas, if you were more efficient and took your speed a bit slower, that fuel tank would last you much longer. This is similar to if we raced around trying to complete all our tasks in a short period of time, we would burn out and our energy would not last us as long as what we would like it to. Therefore, it's important to allow time to refuel so you can get the most out of your tank of energy. You're then gonna be more efficient and be able to conserve your energy so it lasts longer. People can often get confused about the mixed messages. So we're telling you with your pulmonary rehab service to complete three exercise sessions a week. But then today I'm telling you to rest and make sure you conserve your energy. However, physical activity such as your pulmonary rehab strengthening exercises or walking has benefits to helping you manage your fatigue. Evidence suggests if you spend less time exercising and avoiding being active, this can cause more fatigue in the long run. This is due to your overall muscle strength and fitness levels becoming worse over time. In turn, this makes you more fatigued. If you're feeling more fatigued, you're less likely to want to engage in regular exercise or activities, and you might put them off more. Therefore, it's important to allow time in your daily routines or your weekly routines to fit in your exercise and being active. Now we're going to break energy conservation down into four principles that you can apply into your everyday life. This is prioritising, planning, positioning and pacing. Prioritising. So try to think about all the activities you need to do within your typical day, week, morning or afternoon so then you can plan around them. If people offer you help, it's okay to accept it. You may also want to consider outside help such as a gardener or a cleaner. Consider jobs that you are able to cut out of your daily routine or maybe do less frequently. You may also want to think about convenience meals as being a speedy alternative. Planning. 
When do you have the most energy in the day? Think about how much energy you're going to be using up completing activities. If it's something that's going to take a lot amount of energy, you might want to break it down into bite-sized chunks so they're more manageable. We also want you to set realistic targets. We don't want you to be too ambitious on your good days. For example, showering. When you think of this activity, it might seem quite simple, but if you break it down, there's lots of elements that you need to do to be able to complete it. So you need to gather your objects, get undressed, get in the shower, then have a shower, get out of the shower, dry yourself, maybe dry your hair, and then get dressed again. Make sure for activities like this, you allow enough time to complete them and stop for rest in between. You might also want to complete them when you have the most energy throughout your day. It doesn't have to be in the morning when you first get up, it could be later on in the afternoon when you've restored your energy. Positioning. So try to make sure that you have everything out in front of you before you complete an activity. You may also want to think about where things are stored, making sure they're easy to reach so you're not having to bend and stretch too much. You may also want to consider adaptive equipment or seating. This will help conserve some of your energy that you can use at another time. It's also important to think about your environment, so making sure there's good lighting and an open window to help with the air circulation. Pacing. So allow time for frequent rest. We don't want you to complete an activity, then wait till the end to have your rest. Take a break before you feel tired and try not to rush an activity because this will use up more energy in the long run. We want you to try and avoid the boom and bust behaviour. So this is when you've had a good amount of time to restore your energy, you want to use it. So you try and complete as many activities as you can in a short pace of time. And because you've done so, you then bust. Because you've used up all your energy in a short space of time, this therefore has an impact on the rest of your day. And you will then have to rest throughout the rest of the day because you've used all your energy up. Some equipment that might help you complete your activities are seating. So on the screen we've got a perching stool and a shower chair. These will help conserve some of your energy because you're completing the activity in seating and you're not using as much energy. We've also got a kitchen trolley. Not only does this act as a mobility aid, because you can put objects on them, this helps you carry them around the house, again, not using up as much of your energy. And walking aids. This reduces the effort that you're needing to be able to walk and therefore can conserve your energy for another activity. If you feel any of these pieces of equipment might benefit you, please speak to one of our pulmonary rehab professionals and we can help advise you on how to get these. In conclusion, you're going to have your good days and bad days. It's okay to get a little bit out of breath, but we want you to know your limit. Remember the four P's and try and apply them to your everyday tasks. And remember, it's okay to ask for help. Thank you for listening. If you've got any more questions, your pulmonary rehab professional will be in touch with you this week to discuss further.